Hi kids, welcome back to Calvary Kids Connect. I'm teacher Phoebe and today we have an awesome video planned for you guys. It feels so good to be back here filming these videos for you guys so you guys can learn more about Jesus and God's kingdom. We had a long break from Christmas and the holidays, but we're excited to get back into it. So now let's get into the video, but first let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day and thank you for giving us this ministry, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit moves within this place, Lord, that it touches the lives of those watching, Lord, and it touches the lives of the servants involved. We thank you and we praise you for everything that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, now let's move into the memory verse review. Hi, guys. So let's go over the memory verse together. This memory verse for this week is Thanksgiving themed, okay? It's in Psalms 100, verse Four. So if you need to go get your Bible, go get your sword right now so we can go over it together. Otherwise, just repeat after me, okay? On the count of three, let's read it. One, two, three. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Psalms 100 verse four. Let's try it one more time. One, two, three. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Psalms chapter 100 verse 4. All right, guys. I hope you guys have a blessed Thanksgiving week. And just to remember why that we need to come in the presence of God with thanksgiving always. Great job practicing, you guys. It's awesome to memorize God's word. Now let's move on into worship and praise. John 8, 12. Again Jesus spoke to them Saying I am the light of the world Again Jesus spoke to them
Nor did. 
Now that was some fun songs to sing now, wasn't it? Now let's go into the teaching with Teacher Deborah. Good evening, boys and girls, or good afternoon, rather. It's been a long time since we've done one of these videos, but I'm so glad that we're back on track. So today we're going to be reading out of Genesis chapter 1, um, verses 1 through 19. So it's a long stretch of scripture, but we're starting all over so that we could get through this Bible and start talking about, um, so we're starting off with creation. But before we get started, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that there is a beginning and you were at the beginning. You're at the beginning, you're in the middle, and you're at the end. And we praise you and we thank you and we find comfort in knowing that you are our protector and our guide. Thank you, Jesus. Open our ears so that we could hear your word and open our hearts so that we can receive what you would have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, boys and girls, remember... Go get your Bible. And remember, in the Bible, it's God's Word. And God's Word is true. So go get your Bibles. And when you get them, open to Genesis, which is the very first book of the Bible in the Old Testament. And we're going to read chapter 1, verses 1 through 19. So bear with me, but let's start reading. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And then God saw, that light, saw the light, that it was good. And then God divided the light from the darkness day and night, remember? And God called the light day and darkness he called night. So in the evening, so the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firm, firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters, which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were so the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place. And let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and gathered together the waters that he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. So he had this creation, right? So now he's developing the earth. So he made, the firmament was what they're talking about, the earth. So he divided the earth from the heavens, the sky, the stars, the other planets. So that's where he divided that. But then now he saw all the water, so he wanted to separate that too. And he made land and water. Oh, I lost my place. Sorry, guys. And so it was. And God called the dry land earth, and gathering together the waters he called seas. And then he saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herbs that yield seed and the tree the fruit trees that yield fruit according to its kind whose seed is itself on the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass the herb that yields seed according to its kind and the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind and god saw that it was good so the evening and the morning were the third day then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of, he of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be therefore signs and seasons and for the days and the years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light on the earth. It was so. And then God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Guess what those lights were? 
the sun, and the moon. He also made stars. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So evening and morning were fourth day. So a lot has happened in those first four days. He, he made the heavens and the earth. He made the um, oceans and the land. He made the plants and the trees. He made um, the sun and the moon. So all these things happened. God was busy developing and creating our world. <clears throat> so on this lesson, uh, we're our main focus is to talk about how God uses the word, um, in, in Hebrew, the word day is yom. Um, so this is what Genesis uses. So, you know, that's, um, that confirms that the, that the days of creation were normal days. They were 24 hour days because they talk about the light of day and the light of night. So when he says the first day light and darkness came, he's telling us that there was that cycle of time that happened complete. So it was 24 hours of time. See, God didn't leave anything for chance and he did not let us think that, um, or, or have us guess rather, um, how much time it took him. He made sure that he accommodated for that. And that's why today we have 24 hours a day because we have a full day and we have a full night. And in the night we have the moon and the stars, which is not as powerful as the daylight, the sun, because the sun is so much uh, stronger that's why we can we have full light and it at nighttime it's still dark but we have we we're not like pitch black we could still see something because of the moon um so see god created this time frame you know god's so amazing he he thought of every little thing not only to i mean he's amazing because he created the world he created you and me but he made sure that even time the time was created. He made sure that that he made um, something that would recognize daytime versus nighttime. It's, it's just amazes me. It amazes me. And he also made plants. He made sure that the apple tree grew apples because that was the seed that came from apples. That's why humans, moms and dads, they can't have a dog because that's not possible. That's not how God created it. A man and a woman, mom and dad, make babies, boy or girl. God blesses a boy or a girl to a mom and a dad. They don't get an apple. <laughs> that would be silly. They don't get a puppy. That doesn't make sense. So God made sure that in his creation, when he made an apple tree, it was gonna give apples not oranges, not pears, not strawberries that come from bushes. He was gonna make sure that each plant or tree, whatever the seed was, was gonna give off that type of fruit. And that was the beginning because man wasn't created yet. So he was already setting the precedence of whatever he created, whatever that, thing was, uh, tree, bush, whatever, whatever fruit it would yield would be exactly what he intended and would give the seed for that particular fruit. So if you planted that seed again, you're not going to get all of a sudden a lemon tree when you planted an apple seed. You see what I'm saying? So God was very specific. You know, he was, he was a great scientist. You know, people say that science is not biblical, but you know, I, I enjoy science. I enjoy science, you know, um, experiments. All that's very interesting. But think about it, boys and girls. God was the greatest scientist of all because he, and but he created everything with order so that even a plant, the grass, you know, that when you plant like um, during a harvest, not harvest, um, we're not farmers, so we wouldn't do harvest time. But say, for instance, you had a garden at your house and your mom wanted to plant roses She's not going to put seeds of cactus or seeds of 
sunflowers if she wants roses no she's gonna plant rose bushes she's gonna plant seeds that will give roses and if you want grass in your in your front yard you're gonna put seeds that have to do with grass not seeds that have to do with i don't know prickly pears for instance you know so the thing is is that god created all this and in order so i mean nowadays um man they try to get tricky and they mix one seed with another seed to make a crazy fruit or what have you but that's not what god intended god made each and every fruit and made each and every tree to yield that seed for that particular fruit so it's just amazing when you think about how god in his majesty in his He's just, you know, I can't even fathom or think how powerful, how, how perfect God is and how he cares so much for me that he wanted to make sure that the apple tree was an apple tree and, um, and that we had daylight and that we had nighttime. He made sure that the times of the day would go on and, and he created, he created the earth and the heavens. He knew that he had to have everything separate. You know, you can't just, you know, it's, he couldn't just say, okay, however it goes. No, he spoke those things into existence. And then he said, okay, well, now the earth is full of water. How is how, my plan is to have trees and people and animals. They can't, you know, be sea people. You know, not everything can be in the sea. So he separated the sea and making land and making uh, water so that he knew that, he needed both in order to uh, for a, a species to um, be able to survive, be able to thrive, be able to plant. See, God, when he was doing everything in those first couple days, it was with the plan of what was going to happen in the future. That's why, boys and girls, it's really important to understand that when God calls you to be saved, it's because he already made that plan for you. God would have it that not one would perish, not one. So he created us all with that little void inside that only he can fill. So don't ever think that things happen by accident. No, it's, it's God's will. And, and when we believe that, then we can live in victory knowing that he has full control of our lives and full control of, of everything because we see in his creation how he planned for every little thing light and darkness, water and land, plants that would be specific to the seed that it, that it would yield, that it would grow specific, because he knew in the future, man would be created and we would need these things. And so I just um, want you guys to understand that all of these things God created with specific types to pre, uh, uh, within the, on the third day, God created specific types of plants on the day three to reprodu reproduce according to their own kind because that was important. It was, um, it was his balance. So, you know, boys and girls, we have to remember that, you know, Jesus is in control. He is the great creator and is just so awesome. I'm so excited that, that the next, these next few weeks, we're going to be talking about creation and it, it just helps us to remind us where everything started and even when it's, even though we're looking at what, what started, it's with the plan of what's to come. So praise the Lord for that. Um, our memory verse, let me go over it with you. Psalms 8, 3 to 4. Now that's in the book of Psalms, which is in the Old Testament. When I look at your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? He cares for us so much. Even though he's the master of the universe, he cares about you. So boys and girls, it's again, it's been too long and I'm so excited to be back with you. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. Come on down to church. We are open. Um, yeah, it's, it's exciting. So we're, we're on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Thursday evenings at 7. We hope to see you there. God bless you. And let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. 
And thank you, Lord, that you have brought us together one more time to learn more about you. I praise you and I thank you, Father, that you've created this whole world that we get to enjoy. And I just pray, Lord, that we, as your children, would learn to take care of your creation and, Lord, to give you honor and glory all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, boys and girls. Thank you, Teacher Deborah. Now we will be going on into the puppet show with Monica and Ryan. Uh, how long is it going to take for this plant to grow? Mm. I put the seed in today and then I put some water and more soil and it hasn't grown at all. Ryan, are you yelling at the plant that you just put in the ground today? Yes, I gave it plenty of water already, so it should be growing. It's not going to grow in one day, but what are you even doing planting? Are you making a garden or something? Well, I'm planting three different kinds of seeds and waiting to see which kind of plants I get. Doing an experiment. Hmm. Do you know what kind of seeds you planted? Oh well, yeah, it says on the packets, sunflowers, pumpkins, and tomatoes. Well, then that's what you're going to get. You're going to get sunflowers, pumpkins, and tomatoes. Just not in one day. Oh, well, you don't know that for sure. <laughs> According to a show I saw on TV, plants evolved over millions of years. So if that's true, then the seeds I planted can still evolve into something new. Uh, but what does the Bible say? Huh? Remember what our teacher at church reminded us to ask? What does the Bible say? Oh yeah, but what does the Bible say about growing plants? Well, it actually does talk about growing plants and seeds. In Genesis chapter 1, when God created the heavens and the earth, he also created plants. And this is what the Bible said. It's in Genesis chapter 1, verses 11 through 13. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. See, the Bible says that God made the seeds grow according to their own kind. Well, uh, what does according to their own kinds mean? Well, it means that if you plant a sunflower seed from the sunflower packet, the pumpkin seed from the pumpkin package, and the tomato seed, then that's exactly what you're going to grow. Sunflowers pumpkins, and tomatoes. Oh, uh, well, what about the evolution? Well, evolution is just an idea that people use because they don't believe in the Bible. Oh, okay, so evolution isn't true, but the Bible is. That's right. Well, I do believe God in the Bible, but then what about my seeds? W what about them? Well, I was hoping for some strawberries, blueberries, and bananas. I wanted to make a milkshake. Uh, well, then you should have planted strawberry seeds, banana seeds, and blueberry seeds, not pumpkin sunflowers and tomato seeds. Ugh, well, I don't even like pumpkins. Let's go buy some strawberry seeds. Okay. Thank you, Monica and Ryan. We missed you. Now let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day and everything that you've done, dear Jesus. We thank you and we praise you for all your good and mighty things, Lord, your provision over us, Lord, and just being here with us every single day. Dear Lord, protect us throughout our week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Bye. See you next time.